So you wish to learn the ancient art of chivalry. Well, you've come to the right place. These days, chivalry means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but if there's a special woman in your life, don't take the example of a sweaty neckbeard writing from his mother's basement, get medieval on your love, and study from the work of a real knight. But be warned, the two may not be as different as you expect. Behold the sacred text, The Service of Ladies, written in the year of our Lord 1250 by a real knight renowned throughout Europe for his uneclipsed prowess in tournaments. This is his own account of his life, told in verse. This is how to practice real chivalry. The first step, you gotta be thirsty. And maybe get peed on, just a little. Sir, our spies came back with intel from Sweden. Good, what's the report? They've created something called Crusader Kings 3. It's one of the most comprehensive simulations of medieval life we've ever seen. Better than the top secret one the US military uses? I'm afraid so, sir. What took those agents so long to get back to us? It's fun. It's really fun. I spent 12 hours yesterday playing as this little count in Ireland. I had a baby and I finally managed to kill him. Focus, soldier! Right. Well, sir. It's being continuously updated with new DLC. They've just added something called Tours and Tournaments. It's a whole system for jousting tournaments and royal tours. I, I can't believe it. Jousting and royal parades aren't just iconic symbols of the era. They played an important part in the intricate tapestry of court life and politics. And I got to be a part of that rich history. Can we do anything to get ahead of them? Do we need to, sir? It's available to the whole world on Steam. Link in the description on May 11th. That only gives us 10 minutes. This is the American government, dogammit, we can do anything! I don't know if it's possible, sir, but I consulted the archives, and I found this. Ulrich of Liechtenstein is the name of our teacher today, and his first lesson is to adopt a chivalrous mindset. He begins his book by saying, I greet the ladies one and all, and espouses how much he loves women. Like, really loves women. Their splendor lights up every land. None give the honor that is due to a woman's goodness, though their praise outstrips the light of summer days. When the world shall pass away, the praise of women shall suffice for poets up in paradise. This is not an easy task. Many years have I been witness to women being awesome and practiced in the sacred art of pining, and I can only dream of achieving this level of simpitude. But Ulrich, he was a prodigy. As a child, his imagination was regularly captured by the sayings of poets and wise men, all of whom extolled the virtues of women. None can be happy, they said. None can stay contented in this world, but he who loves and with such loyalty to a noble woman that he'd die if it would save her from a sigh. That's right. True happiness is suicide for the sake of sparing a woman's convenience. And so Ulrich devoted himself then and there atop his hobby horse and dedicated his life to serving women. At the age of 12, he became a page to a woman who was famous throughout the land for her beautiful singing. He never actually names this woman, so we'll just call her Milady. Arriving at her court, young Ulrich looked around at all the other errand boys working at the castle and thought to himself, if they look at my lady, I'm gonna put these nose pickers in the dirt. He spent afternoons picking wild flowers just so he can see Milady hold between her fingers the same stems that moments ago were in his. Whenever Milady would wash her hands before a meal, little boy Ulrich would wait around until no one was looking, pick up the basin, and drink it. Ladies, you may not like it, but historically speaking, this is what chivalry looks like. In those four years working for Milady, life couldn't be sweeter. But one terrible day, Ulrich got a letter from his dad saying, No, no, stop this, please, for the love of all that is holy. Ulrich was pulled out of Milady's castle and was sent to the service of a man who will teach him how to be a real knight. For seven years, Ulrich trains by day to be a warrior, but can only dream of Milady and her angelic voice and yummy, yummy bathwater. And then, sweet fortune! On the day of his graduation, when he and the other squires become knights at last, there, watching the festivities, is Milady. Ulrich goes ham in the jousting tournament, trying to catch her attention, but he never gets the chance to talk to her. But aha! Ulrich's aunt is there, and she happens to know Milady. 
Ulrich asks his aunt to talk to her and ask if he can enter her service again as a knight, but Auntie von Lichtenstein can see where his heart is. She knows it's impossible for someone like Ulrich to ever get close to a high-class woman like Milady, but there is literally nothing that Auntie von Lichtenstein enjoys more than being a mischievous matchmaker, so she does it anyway. She tells Milady of her nephew's wishes, and Milady says, Alas, I'm sure your nephew is a worthy man, but it, it cannot be. Let us not speak of this. Oh, do not scorn him. Give him a chance to prove his worth. No, no, I'm sure he's worthy. He's totally worthy. Is he not rich enough? Noble enough? No, no. <laughs> it, it's, um, uh, he's got a cleft lip. It's a bit, ugh, you know? What can you do? Auntie Lichtenstein breaks the news to Ulrich, and you know what? Ulrich is overjoyed! What you may see is a shallow woman who's not worth serving, but a master of chivalry like Ulrich sees that all he has to do to be her knight in shining armor is undergo a surgery that has the potential to literally kill him. Remember, of course, plastic surgery in the year 1250, while it did exist, was not only limited and extremely dangerous in its own right, but you also had no anesthesia. And if you flinched while the doctor was operating, you could slice up your entire face. Ulrich travels far and wide to seek out the best possible doctor and spends a fortune getting his face re-sculpted, all for the chance to talk to his love one single time. Well, make no mistake, Milady gives him a chance, but this isn't a casual chat. She's gonna be out riding, he gets one chance to make his pitch to her, and then he needs to leave. Ulrich, it turns out, is brave enough for conscious surgery, but is too afraid to talk to a woman. He messes up about 12 times before the words finally spill out. I wanna be your knight, can I knight you, knight me? I mean, please knight me, mommy. I'm sorry, you're sweet, but you don't seem especially daring. Now you, my friend, you might be sad when the love of your life rejects you and insults you for being shy at the same time, but that's because you're doing it wrong. The chivalry handbook says, don't take no for an answer. Ulrich here, he's happier than ever. Immediately after getting rejected, he says verbatim, as far as I could tell, my suit was going rather well. And that's because hell no is just the first step towards a yes. Ulrich knows he can prove his worth. He travels Europe competing in every jousting tournament, declaring his undying devotion to Milady at every one, so that everyone will know her name, and she can see just how brave he is. He has his aunt send more and more letters to Milady to show her just how awesome her nephew is and how he's the best jouster ever. But she writes back, You're literally the only person who ever mentions him and he's related to you. Please, stop. I am no longer taking your messages. Well, that just means Ulrich has to be even more famous. Sooner or later, Ulrich gets into a tragic jousting accident and nearly loses his finger, but when his friend comes to visit, Ulrich realizes that this is the best of all possible worlds. Dude, I came as soon as I heard. Are you alright? Yeah, the doctor says it'll fix itself eventually, but look what I can do. Ugh. Wait, if you're here, that means even you have heard about the daring deeds I do for Milady. You know Milady? You know Milady? Yeah, I work for one of her friends. I was talking with her a few weeks ago. Did she mention me? Uh, no. Sorry, bud. That means she doesn't hate me. Will you bring her this letter for me and tell her how I lost a finger for her and ask if I can be her brave little knight? Sure thing, bud. My lady, I come with a message. Oh, you work for so-and-so, right? How's she doing? Actually, I have a message here from a knight. He says he's chosen you to be his lady evermore, and lost a finger fighting in your name. Oh god, please no. Ahem. <clears throat> you are more than all the world to him, more than riches, life and limb, his heaven, and his paradise, is you. So lovely, and so... nice. I swear to god, this is the last warning. Tell him to stop, or I will make him stop. And that's what she said. But I maimed myself for her! Wait! Of course! How silly of me. She thinks I'm bluffing. What? Unfaithful digit. You have vexed my lady, dear! Gah! Ulrich! Send this to her, would you?
With spirits higher than ever before, Ulrich continues to challenge the greatest fighters in all Europe, and he does it in drag, so Milady is sure to hear about it. There's a lot of fighting in this part of the book, like, really, a lot. Um, and at one point he stops to see his wife. Yeah, he's had a wife this whole time. I don't think he ever mentioned getting married, it's... Look, chivalry isn't about who's in your bed, it's about who's in your heart. Eventually, Ulrich shows up at Milady's castle and she says, Oh, uh, you know, I'd love to have you over. It's just, uh, what would people think? You know, go wait out in the rain with the lepers and maybe I can sneak you in. Want to hear how I lost my finger? Ulrich sits with the lepers, trying to avoid eye contact for days, weeks even, and has to take up begging in the streets to get by. He might have stayed out there until he died of exposure, or possibly leprosy, had it not been for the fact that Milady had a special visitor. Auntie von Lichtenstein is back! Milady sends word to Ulrich that he'll be welcomed into the tower that very night. He just needs to find a spot nearby to hide. That very night, Milady lowers a bedsheet to hoist him up. But it turns out Ulrich is rather a heavy man, so he has to get his friend up in the tower to help lift. But slowly, ever so slowly, they hoist Ulrich up to the lady's room. Ugh! Milady! Are you... wet? It turns out my hiding spot is the guard's latrine, but I stayed perfectly still. Okay, friend. Uh, yes. Hi. I want to say thank you for all your jousting. You've been very noble. So, when do we get down and dirty? Nope! 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 One of you talk some sense into him. I'm not doing this. Now Ulrich does the chivalrous thing. He calmly yet firmly explains to his aunt that he's not taking one step out of the room until Milady goes to bed with him. And if she doesn't, he'll kill himself. That's the secret, you see. Chivalry isn't about doing what a woman wants. It's about doing what you want and telling her she made you do it. Auntie Lichtenstein sees what a gentleman Ulrich is being and is moved enough to start delivering messages back and forth between the two rooms as his wing woman. She tells Milady that the honorable thing to do is to sleep with Ulrich so he doesn't kill himself. Oh, God, he's really gonna do it too. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh... I'll come up with something. To keep Ulrich happy, and to not sleep with him at the same time, Milady tells him that he blew his cover crying like a baby in the middle of the courtyard, so now, if he wants a chance with her, he'll have to pass a test. He has to travel far, far away, to the other side of the ocean, and go on some kind of a crusade. Who knows, it could take years, and when he gets back, they can be together, as long as he did a good enough job and doesn't have to go on another crusade. Ulrich's friend does point out to Ulrich that it is an option not to crusade in a foreign land for the woman who doesn't really seem to like him that much, but Ulrich won't be swayed by such cheap words. He set sail, and that was the last time that Ulrich von Lichtenstein was ever seen. At least, that's how I would end the story. Milady actually changes her mind because she knows Ulrich's either gonna get himself killed and she'll feel bad, or he's actually gonna pull it off and then we're back where we started. Instead, she finally finds something that turns him off, but the numbering of the sections in the books seems to imply there might be missing chapters. Either way, he doesn't say what the thing that she did was, so we're totally in the dark about whatever deus ex machina she managed to pull. Womp womp. But you know what the most messed up part is? For years, this book was considered an autobiography, but historians today are pretty sure the whole thing was parody. In real life, Ulrich was a very accomplished knight who owned multiple estates and had a good enough sense of humor to exaggerate the awkwardness of his youth and turn it into art. It's kind of a letdown to think he might not have been using his aunt as a wingman, but I don't know, I kind of think that makes this book cooler. It's times like this I wish I had a background in literature or gender studies. I wish I had some insight into how the intended audience would have actually read this story, because this book, written in 12 god dang 50, actually lampoons the paradoxical nature of medieval chivalry to put women on a pedestal and completely ignore their wishes at the same time, and it seems to be intentional. But, uh, I guess we'll never know.